Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Today will be talking about upcoming choral performance uh, performed here in the city of Troy by a pair of groups in the choral department. And my guest today is uh, Connor Murphy-White, the uh, PR manager for the choral department mm -hmm. here at Troy. Thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. Nice to be here. And uh, a concert uh, of the choral groups here and there's a pair of choral groups performing. Tell us a little about the concert and what's going on. Um, it's Concert Chorale and Collegiate Singers. Um, concert Chorale is the auditioned choir and Collegiate Singers is anyone on campus can register for that class. Um, concert Chorale is directed by Dr. Diane Orlovsky and Collegiate Singers is Miss Laura Mixon and we're doing a concert of some masterworks. And each of those groups, about how big are each of those groups? Because you talk about one, anyone can be involved in the Illinois audition. What are we talking about size of these choirs here? Size-wise, uh, Concert Crowl's 25 to 30, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And then Collegiate Singers has been anywhere from 50 to about 125. <laughs> so what does it, it stand about right now? So how many Right now, it's probably about... 60 to 70. Mm, so a lot of voices. So you're experiencing a big choral yes. performance there. So, and, and you said this is a joint performance. So mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little about, I guess, the, the concert itself and what folks can expect out of the concert. Well, the concert uh, starts out with a concert chorale piece and then a collegiate singers piece and then it, it switches back and forth. And there are two combined pieces, okay. one by Mo Moses Hogan and the other by Rayfon Williams. So uh, a chance to combine all those voices together. Yeah. Uh, how difficult is it to get, I guess, two different uh, choral groups to work together on a piece that they, well, they, they don't normally perform together? No, they don't normally mm -hmm. perform together. But it's not, it's not really that, that difficult because some of the members in concert chorale are in collegiate singers, okay. and we've both had the music to learn. So some of those people, they're doing double duty yeah. there. So they may be a little bit tired by the end of the night <laughs> having to perform. You said they're all Probably. training, but they have to perform each number then, mm -hmm. right? They do. Now, what kind of preparation goes into a concert like this? Uh, obviously, with two different groups performing, uh, it's a chance to showcase the talents. But how prepared and how much preparation goes into this kind of performance? Well, we get brand new music at the start of every term. And we work three hours in class every week. And there are two sectionals for every a soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And you, the students just learn the music themselves. And so uh, now I know that uh, occasionally uh, some you'll get some outside help uh, mm -hmm. for some of the, some of the work. Uh, I know clinicians and stuff come in. Is that true of this this performance? You had any work with some outside uh, uh, people to work on this one? Yes, we have for two of our pieces, Una Lacrima, and another one of his pieces, John Ratled of University of Alabama came down and worked with Concert Corral for about three hours one day. He drove all the way down, uh -huh. rainy day. He came and worked <laughs> with us, and it was a great. Great opportunity. And, and how, I guess, valuable is it to be able to work with uh, someone other than the director you're commonly associated with every day, day in and day out? Well, it's, it's brand new inspiration mm -hmm. when you have someone else conducting you. But it's so great to have the composer conduct you because he or she wrote the piece, so they know how they want it to sound. <laughs> and so you get that direct impact. Yeah. You know, it's, it, you know, the voice is supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be this fast or this slow. So a, a good experience, I would assume, for, oh, yeah, for, for exactly. all of you involved. So now you are in uh, one of the groups. Which group are you in? You're I'm in, in Concert Chorale. Concert Chorale. So uh, as a performer, how does it make you feel to be able to show off your talents and all this hard work to the public? Oh, it's so great. I mean, music is a universal language. We're singing in Latin and we're singing in Italian, but anyone, when you, when you hear music, you feel the music. So it's such a great opportunity to sing. And now the, the concert itself, uh, as with most of the choral concerts, uh, you're not on campus. It's going to be out into, yes. in the community, correct? Uh, tell us about where the concert's going to be. Uh, the concert is at 7.30 mm -hmm. next Tuesday, March the 26th at First Baptist Church. First Baptist Church. And so uh, working uh, or performing somewhere outside of the campus, I guess, uh, opens up some new opportunities for some new fans out there that may not have heard yeah, you before. Yeah, it's great. Um, the acoustics at First Baptist are great. They're phenomenal. It's a great place to sing in. And the members of the church, I mean, they get 
they get to hear us sing in their own home. And so, uh, you know, a church is made for choirs to sing in, it so is, obviously exactly. it's a good opportunity for you. That's so. where the music was born. And, uh, well, if anyone is interested in going to the concert, uh, uh, how much are tickets? It's free. Free? Come come on down <laughs> and enjoy great music. A free concert, a uh, good opportunity to hear some, some of the talents of uh, Troy University's choral group mm-hmm. performed. And once again, when and where is it? It is next Tuesday, March 26th. Uh, 7.30 at First Baptist Church. All right. Well, uh, good luck with the performance. Thank and, you. And uh, I'm sure uh, you'll get some new fans from seeing playing out in the community. So. so thanks for joining me today. Thank you.